If you clicked on this video and you're not already subscribed to my channel, then the odds are in your recent search results, the words waterproof flooring pop up. And waterproof is one of the biggest buzzwords in flooring and building materials more broadly today. In this video, I'm gonna be talking specifically about real wood floors and whether or not the waterproof element is something that's worth you considering in shopping for wood floors or if it's really just more of a gimmick. We'll leave waterproof laminate and waterproof vinyls for a different video. Those products have been around a little bit longer, but we're really starting to see from our wood manufacturers more and more products that feature something with waterproof or water resistant offerings. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name's Robert. I'm here to help with all your remodeling needs, so be sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me in the future. For those of you who are already subscribers, thanks for coming back. All right, so when we're trying to understand what water resistant or waterproof means in terms of wood flooring, the one thing we have to be aware of is that wood is not waterproof. So solid wood flooring is immediately taken out of the picture and we will not have to worry about or discuss any type of options for us to get a waterproof solid wood floor because it just doesn't exist. So moving away from solid, we're gonna be talking about a variety of different engineered wood flooring options. And if you want a little bit more of a broad explanation of wood, I suggest you go and check out my other video, Beginner's Guide to Hardwood Flooring. Also, it's important to me that you know this video is not sponsored by any manufacturer or wood flooring brand. Uh, I'm not being paid by any particular company to be promoting a product, so this video is strictly for informational purposes only. Knowing that wood itself is not waterproof, where does the water resistant or waterproof feature come into play? Well, it comes into play from a couple different things. One is a topical treatment that some manufacturers are putting over the surface of the wood to make them repel water and make it harder for water to absorb into the surface of the product. The other element that's gonna move us more towards a true waterproof wood floor is in the replacement of the engineered plied construction with some type of a waterproof core for the actual center portion of the waterproof floor. Now you take that and you couple it with a locking system and waterproof treatment to the joints that keeps it from ever being able to actually penetrate through the surface of the floor once installed. Another really important thing that you need to know is that the true waterproof element of an installed floor is not just strictly in the manufacturing of that product, but also in the installation methods that are used to achieve a 100% watertight surface. So taking advantage of this in-store display that we actually have in our own showroom, we're gonna look at a side-by-side -side comparison of a 100% waterproof wood with a traditional engineered wood floor. Now the biggest difference is gonna come in the actual construction of the center part of this product because both products have a veneer of real wood on the surface. But a traditional engineered wood floor really resembles plywood and that you have multiple layers of wood that are bonded together. Now that provides us with a lot more structural integrity than a solid wood floor. But when we move into a waterproof floor, we're gonna replace that plywood construction with either a high density fiber core that we would see in laminates or some type of a WPC or SPC core that we would see traditionally in our waterproof vinyls. To achieve a true waterproof floor, we have to move away from our typical engineered wood floor, that's the plywood construction with a tongue and groove joint, over to one of our uh, products that features either the WPC, SPC core, or the fiber core, and gives us a locking system. And that's what's gonna allow us to lock out the water from penetrating through there, along with the treatment that they place into that locking system, uh, which we cannot be achieved in a traditional tongue and groove wood floor. And here you can see an engineered wood floor that has been exposed to a lot of water. All of these darkened areas here where the wood had started to swell and gotten oversaturated with water, we will get this type of permanent darkening in the wood floor. And really at that point, you don't have a way to restore this. It would need to actually be replaced. When we have another product that has a joint that will never allow for water to penetrate through there, that water theoretically can sit there indefinitely and never actually enter in and affect the wood the way that we see it here. 
Now here we see kind of a cutaway image of where a wood floor would end against a wall. And to create a true waterproof installation, we have to not only worry about the fact that our joints are watertight, but when we get to the perimeter and we end up with a cut piece of floor against a wall, that has to be sealed off too so that no water can come in through the perimeter. So for it to be a completely waterproof warrantied installation, there's additional materials that we have to use to make sure that we're completely sealing off that joint between the floor and the wall and then putting a, an actual waterproof product above to completely seal that off. Otherwise, we have a product that won't allow water in through the center of the floor, but we could still get water that's coming in through the perimeter. So in areas like tubs, uh, in kitchens against cabinetry, anywhere that we could have water kind of sneak in from the side, we want to make sure that we're properly sealing that off as well. Even if we have a 100% waterproof floor, you'll see in the fine print that there are installation requirements to make sure that the manufacturer is going to stand behind that warranty. But if you find yourself asking if there's any drawbacks to the waterproof wood floors, I would say yes there are, but they're drawbacks that might be an issue for some and may not be an issue for others. I would say most notably is the fact that with our true waterproof wood floors, they're going to be a floating installation. So if you're looking for something that's an easy floor to install, that might be a good thing. But one of the biggest complaints that we've always had with laminates and even some of the waterproof vinyls, when they're floating, they have a very different sound and they click a little bit louder when you're walking on them because there's space between that and the subfloor. Every time you step on it, you're pretty much slapping the floor down against the, the subfloor. Now there's underlayments that help to quiet that, but it will always sound different than when we have a floor that's either glued to a concrete subfloor or stapled into a wood subfloor. So that's just something to be aware of. If that's a really important thing to you, then it might not be the best idea for you to float any kind of floor and you wanna stick with something that's actually more secured to your subfloor and gives you that more solid feel and sound. Another drawback to some of these water resistant and waterproof floors, probably more so with the products that tout resistance to water because they've been treated with a repellent over the surface, is the fact that that product's not gonna be able to be refinished or resanded down the road. Now, if you watch my other video, you'll know that I'm really not a fan of trying to refinish an engineered wood floor anyways, but with these floors, you generally have a very, very thin veneer that there's really not enough wood for us to refinish. And then even if we could, in refinishing that floor, you'd be sanding off any type of treatment that was applied to the floor in the first place. So you would no longer have a wood that really resembled what you originally purchased or gave you that warranty that you originally had on your wood floor. And another thing to note is that there are so many options when it comes to wood flooring and engineered wood flooring. And when we move to a product that's gonna be a water resistant or waterproof option, we're gonna scale back our options dramatically in terms of what species that we can get, what type of sizes and formats. There's just not gonna be near as many products that have moved into the waterproof flooring category. And again, because we have a locking system, we're not gonna be able to do things like herringbones and chevrons that we can much more easily do when we have a tongue and grooved installation. So if you're wanting something that you can get really custom with the layout, you're again gonna be more limited in terms of a waterproof floor because of that installation method. And with all materials that you purchase for your home, if they're not installed correctly, then you're not gonna end up getting the performance that your material was designed to give you. So with waterproof wood flooring, in the warranties, you're gonna see a lot of references to proper installation methods, and it's really important that you make sure that whoever is installing this product adheres to all of those guidelines so that you do get the protection from the manufacturer's side. You should always make sure that your installer is giving you an installation warranty, but for you to not risk jeopardizing some of the features that the floor offers, then you wanna make sure that all of those additional guidelines are being adhered to. I'm sure many of you are curious if the waterproof wood floors are more expensive than our traditional engineered woods. And you might be pleasantly surprised to find out that no, in most cases they're pretty comparable and sometimes they're even quite a bit less than what some of our engineered wood floors are. Biggest reason for that is they're a thinner constructed product and with our engineered wood floors, we're gonna have products that get up to almost three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, but with our waterproof woods, because of the core and the floating mechanism, most of the time they're gonna be three eighths to about a half inch thick at the most. 
Now, even though the material might not be more expensive for the waterproof wood floor, there are some additional elements in the installation that may equate to some additional costs for waterproofing the perimeter of it, both on the materials that need to be used for that, as well as the actual process of putting it in. So that's another item to discuss with your contractor if you're trying to get a true comparison of how much one would be versus the other. So with all those factors considered, I promised that I would share my own personal thoughts and recommendations regarding waterproof wood floors. Uh, no, I don't think that they're a gimmick, but I do think that our industry has really overhyped the idea of waterproof for consumers. And I think for most people, it's not something that you need to limit yourself in terms of options by only sticking with products that give you a waterproof warranty. If you personally love getting a shark steamer out and steam cleaning your wood floors, or maybe you have a outside cleaning company that comes in and you're a little bit concerned that they're going to follow all the directions of cleaning a traditional wood floor the correct way, then the waterproof might give you a little bit more peace of mind. But if it's more just the day-to-day -day stuff that you're concerned about, I would not limit yourself to just the offerings that waterproof wood gives. If you fall in love with the wood that happens to be waterproof, then great. But otherwise, there's so many products out there to consider that I would not get hung up on that one small little detail. And with any waterproof flooring video that I ever come out with in the future, I will always promise to reiterate that these floors may be waterproof, but there is no floodproof floor. So if you ever have a flood in your house or an insurance related issue, you have to understand that even if your floor is relatively intact, all of the other peripheral damage that happens to your house is typically still going to warrant needing to replace this floor. Your drywall, studs, your subfloor. When you have a major flood issue, do not make the mistake of thinking that your waterproof floor is going to be the saving grace. As these products are becoming more and more bold with their waterproof claims, we're now starting to see more mention of the protection that these floors are gonna give even to your subfloor. But the reality is if you have any type of major exposure to water with a flood situation or something that is initiated with a burst pipe in your concrete, uh, then you're not gonna have this as the saving grace. There's gonna be other things that still require replacement of a lot of other parts of your house and your floor usually becomes collateral damage in that process. In some smaller leaks and floods that are caught early and are fairly contained, you might have the luxury of removing the floor doing the other repairs and then reinstalling the same existing floor. But I would say that that's generally a rare exception and not the rule. So comment down below what you guys thought of this video. If you have any questions, something I forgot to mention in here, I'll try to answer that down below. If you've recently purchased some wood floors, let us know what you went with and how you're liking it so far. If you'd like to see more from me, be sure to subscribe and please hit that thumbs up button if you found this information valuable. It's a huge help to me and I appreciate your support. Again, my name is Robert and I'm here to help with all your remodeling needs. So until next time, happy remodeling and have a great day.